What's up guys, Kyle here again, and welcome to another episode of Fack and Friday. Or this week, it's Fack and Saturday, because I was really busy and uh, I completely forgot to record my FAQ episode, and I didn't realize it until about 10.30 last night. So yeah, here I am, Friday afternoon, recording the FAQ for Friday, but it'll be up Saturday. But I thought, what the hell, it's good to mix it up a little bit here and there, right? So, with that out of the way, let's get to some questions. Today's gonna be like rapid fire answers. I'm gonna try to get through as many questions as I can in about 10 minutes before I have to go back to work. So Xander Wild asks, what real cabs sound best with the 5150 50 watt stealth? Thanks for your question, Xander. Of course, this is gonna be completely subjective dependent on the player, dependent on the guitar that you're using and your settings and blah, blah, blah. all that standard you know, type of response when it comes to these things. But for me personally, I have really been digging that amp with the Mesa Oversize Rectifier Cab. Now, I have both a traditional and an Oversize Mesa Cab with V30s. For whatever reason, I just like the mids better of the Oversized one. That cab is still plenty tight because Mesa seals them airtight from the factory. So the, the, the cab itself doesn't have a lot of give. So even though there's a bigger internal volume and there is more low end, I've never found it to be a loose cab. And for some reason, just the extra internal volume just seems to balance the frequencies out a little bit more in my opinion so the mids are a little bit more forward than they are in the smaller cab where i feel the traditional mesa cab it's tighter in the low end by a little bit but it's it's seems to accentuate the high frequencies more and that could be due to the internal volume and the reflections i, I don't know i'm not a i'm not a science nerd when it comes to this stuff i just tell you guys what i hear with my with my hearing ears right here. So what my ears tell me the difference between the two cabs is the oversized cab has more mids in a more broad range, whereas the traditional cab is a little bit spikier in the highs and the high mids. So I think that the Stealth sounds fantastic through that Mesa oversized cab. And to be honest, I've been playing that cab so much, I haven't really gotten a chance to play it through too many other cabs to really um, gauge how it reacts to like my Splawn or my Friedman or Bogner cabs or anything. I will say I played it, I got a pair of the EVH 212 Stealth cabs last week. Playing through those, that amp sounds great through those. And it makes sense because that's what they were supposed to be matched up with in the first place. The PV5150 cabs, a lot of people didn't like the 5150 through the 5150 cabs for metal. They liked it through the Mesa cabs better. I think the EVH cabs suit the head a little bit better for metal than the old PV matching cab did for the uh, actual PV5150. So yeah, the 212 cabs, EVH cabs with the stock speakers sound great. They have the G12H30 anniversaries in those ones. And then Mesa Oversized Cab sounds awesome as well. That was not a rapid answer at all. I'm already failing. Dylan Keo, you're Keo now. I don't care if that's how you pronounce it. Says, Mr. Thrash Damon, I have a question. What is your opinion on power conditioners? Do you use one? I have never used a power conditioner. And from what I understand, the majority of them are really not all that functional. They don't really do that much anyways. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. This is by no means a statement of fact. I'm just saying what I've heard. All the Furman power conditioners, everybody says that they basically don't really do anything to help uh, in the way that they're supposed to. So I have never used one. I've never even considered looking into them. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll look into them now because you brought it to my attention, but never used one before, man. Ronnie Webster, one of my patrons says, aside from something more obvious like rectifiers, is there a trend in gear or a piece of gear that most people seem to rave over that you cannot stand? I personally don't really love a lot of the Fortin designed amps and stuff. Uh, most of my experience falls within the realm of the Randall stuff that he collaborated with them on. That would be the Thrasher 50, the Satan 50, and even the Diablo. Wasn't really a fan of any of those amps. I don't think they sound bad. Um, they just don't suit me and I, I don't really understand the hype around them. They, they seem a little bit uh, like the character was just kind of plain. They, they just didn't suit my ear very well and I've kind of said that a couple times on this channel. No offense to Mike, you know, I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with his designs. They just, for me personally, they don't do anything. The Sigil was kind of the same way. It sounded good but didn't blow me away. The Cali was the same way. I liked OD1 quite a bit but again, there were other things that I would choose over it. So. Um, I just don't quite love the Fortin hype, but I may come around. Who knows? I've come around on rectifiers recently. Uh, I love my multi-watt. I love the re last Rev G that I had. Now I have a triple rectifier that I recently modded. Uh, you guys can see a 30 second clip of that down in my older videos. 
I brought it a little bit closer to uh, early revision specs and now it's tighter and a little gainier, a little easier to play. So I'm, I'm kind of slowly getting on that rectifier train after years and years. But anyways, yeah, I would say the Fortin stuff would be the number one on that one for me of things that a lot of people seem to love and seem to hype that I just can't, can't really get into myself. Okay, so Bear on Guitar asks, what are your favorite fat and loose sounding amps and what would you say their role is their role in metal music? Man, I butchered that. He says, I see a trend where every new amp is trying to be super tight and I'm personally missing the fatness with these, which is something that I really prefer with the rectifiers. Man, I think one of the reasons that a lot of amps now are trying to be super tight is because all the amps for years were really not that tight uh without a boost in front and the new thing is everybody's boosting amps but a lot of people don't want to have to boost their amps or carry a, a boost with them or, or stick anything in front to to tighten the amp they want it they want to plug directly into the amp and have it be as tight as they want it to be so i understand the trend especially with um you know a lot of modern music is is using seven and eight string guitars and stuff like that or tuning lower so tightness gets even harder to achieve um, by just plugging into an amp when you get those lower frequencies involved. So like it should, the market is following the trends and these amp designers are building amps that either have built-in boosts or are tight when you plug directly in and, and you don't need a boost. The rev generator that's sitting behind me, that purple channel, man, I don't need a boost with that. It's, it's insanely tight the way that it is. It doesn't lack, uh, especially once you get some volume on it. It's just, it's tight and punchy. I think it's great. Me personally, I love to use boost because I love to color my tone. I love to put my own little signature on things and, and just have a little bit more control over how I dial things in. And, and one of the things that I use for that is a overdrive. But I understand that a lot of people don't want to do that and that's totally fine. And a lot of new amps are kind of catering to that. So I think that there's plenty of amps on the market now that have a massive low end and that are naturally a little bit looser, that there's room for a lot of tighter new amps to come in because that that need for the massive wall of sound type amps the rectifier the Dietzel Herbert the Bogner Ubershaw just to name a few hell the Spawn Quick Rod has a ridiculous low end to it there's lots of options the 5150s can get massive I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody consider that amp to be thin and especially the OG the 5150 the original PV one that one has a little bit of bounce and a little bit of looseness to it, especially when you really get that resonance up. So there's tons of amp on, amps on the market that do the big wall of sound thing. So it's not really a surprise to me that manufacturers are focusing on the new trend of tightening things up without a boost in front because there are a lot of options to choose from that are already loose but can be tightened. So I don't know, makes sense to me. I think there's room for both. I technically, I usually like to blend an amp that's a little bit tight and an amp that's a little bit loose and kind of find a happy middle ground between the two and have them accentuate uh, frequencies that one or the other is missing. That's kind of what I shoot for in a stereo rig. So I don't know, man, I'm all for both. All right, Wes Ness, this is gonna be my last question I have time for today, asks, what thrash band or player influenced you the most when you were starting playing and still inspires you today? Easy, Hetfield, that's, that's a no brainer for me. He immediately comes to mind. I will say that I like a lot of um, Dave Mustaine's phrasing in a lot of his stuff, a little bit better, but overall playing, I mean, how can you deny that James Hetfield has one of the best right hands in history? Uh, all that down picking, the super tight down picking, all the awesome rhythms that he's come up with over the year. Me being a rhythm guy, never really focusing on lead and really just, I, I find more joy in listening to and playing awesome rhythm riffs then I do leads. Leads are cool and everything, but you guys know me. You guys know my channel. My channel is based around riffs. It's based around rhythm playing. It's for the, the thrash metal and the high gain rhythm players. So Hetfield really has just paved the way for what a rhythm player should be doing in metal, in my opinion. And I understand that Metallic is a very polarizing band at this point, but you can't deny that Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets especially, there are just some amazing, amazing right hand rhythms on that record. And yeah, I've just always looked up to his style of playing. I've always enjoyed the way that he writes rhythms and everything. So that that's my number one. Easy answer for me on that one. I know I don't talk about like guitar heroes and stuff like that a lot. You guys kind of ask me more gear questions and that's, that's great because that's what I'm focused on for the most part. But these questions make me think a little bit more because I don't think about that very often. But that, that was an easy one for me to answer because Hetfield is number one. He immediately comes to mind for me. So anyways, thank you guys so much for your questions. I know I didn't get to a lot this week. 
Still short on time, it's just been a really busy week, but I got a lot of exciting things coming up. I'm super pumped for the next couple of weeks and the things that I get to share with you guys. So don't think that I'm burnt out. I am not burnt out by any means. I may look a little tired, but I promise you I am, I am full of energy and I'm ready for everything that's coming up next and I hope you guys are too. As always, appreciate your questions, guys. Please leave your questions for next week's show down below. I'll make sure to actually get the show out on Friday instead of Saturday next week. And uh, again, always look forward to your guys' questions. Always look forward to this segment. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you get great info from it. If you like this video, you like my stupid face. I don't even like my face. You just, in general, like gear and riffs and high gain tones. Consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next week. Bye!